Shepard is here, and Alexi Lotterroot is uh, going to join us. We have some very special drinks, so let's find out a little bit about you guys first. When did you start bartending? Uh, it was probably about 13 or 14 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And why? Uh, I just started out as a part-time job to make ends meet at that time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And what about you, Alexi? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. I'd say about 10 years consistently, mm. and a little bit before that as well, but just to find some way to pay for school or have a little bit of drinking money. All right, well... <laughs> we're out of control from there. <laughs> we're in the right place because you guys have brought a lot here today, and we're going to make three very special cocktails. But first, we're going to talk about whiskey. And we're going to talk about an old-fashioned. So you were telling me some really interesting things about why an old-fashioned is an old-fashioned. Yes. So, I mean, the, you know, talking about cocktails, you can't talk about it without talking about the old-fashioned. Uh, basically, about 200 years ago, in 1806, the word cocktail gets defined in a newspaper uh, where somebody says it's a mixture, a potent mixture of spirit, water, sugar, and bitters. So bitters being Angostura, often what we see. Yeah. Um, and it was basically a way to make spirits palatable because people were making it in their bathtubs, people were making it with extra grain that they had, it wasn't any good. So what we have now today is all what would be considered premium uh, 200 years ago. So people started messing around with these, this idea of the cocktail and using maybe spirits as a sweetener, like a liqueur, or using um, a different kind of sugar or a different kind of spirit. 80 years go by, people are saying, I'd like to get a whiskey cocktail, but done the old fashioned way. So that's wow. where that cocktail got that name. Um, I can start making one for you if you like. Well, I wouldn't say no to that. So <laughs> tell me a little bit about whiskeys and, and talk to me just a bit about uh, the quality of whiskeys and, and liquor in general. Because, uh, you know, you travel around the world and you see all these various brand names, but there are some liquors they call their, their top shelf or their top drawer liquors. Yeah, so I mean, obviously a lot of time what makes a, a spirit more expensive is really, it's more expensive to make. Yeah. Uh, it might, there might be some rarity stuff in there as well where it maybe only made a certain amount. So that can drive the price up as well. But nowadays, pretty much everything you drink is going to be safe to drink. Okay. Um, and, you know, you kind of have different laws in different countries, say for Scotch whiskey to bourbon whiskey, which we're going to talk about, uh, Irish whiskey and Canadian whiskey, and now Japanese whiskey is entering into the market. Um, That's a lot of whiskey. It's a lot of whiskey. <laughs> and it all starts off as essentially a wheat or barley-based yeah. vodka yeah. Uh, or malt, a malt vodka that's then aged for a certain amount of time, usually in oak barrels that gives it its color and distinct flavor. So what are we using today? So today we're using the Canadian Club 100% Rye. It's one uh -huh. of the older uh, rye companies. You, know, you might know them from like their actions in Prohibition. Yep. Uh, this is the version that uses only rye grain. So in Canada, rye whiskey doesn't really, is not a very specific designation where you can have up to, you can have 2% rye in your whiskey and still call it rye whiskey. Whereas in the States, it has to be at least 51%. Okay, okay. So this is 100% done from rye, rye grain. So for an old fashioned, we're gonna start with two ounces of that, nice responsible pour. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, a responsible pour. 60 mils. <laughs> 60 mils, exactly. 58.5 maybe. All right. <laughs> uh, and then, so according to the original recipe, we're looking at bitters, sugar, and water to add to this. So I have a mix of Angostura bitters and some cloudberry bitters here from the uh, Newfoundland Distilling Company. And, and about how much of that did you put? So that's, this is what you call a Japanese dasher. Four dashes out of this okay. would equal to two dashes out of this. Okay, okay. Um, it's to taste. Some people like a lot. If you're using a spirit that you really enjoy, you don't have to use all that much because again, it tends to, it can mask the flavor, but also enhances. Now, tell me about the water. So this is sugar water. Okay. Uh, so this is half water, half sugar. You can use a sugar cube if you want with a yeah. little dash of water as well as what I've seen people do. This is just simple. This is what we use at the restaurant. Makes it faster and easier. And how do you make that? So it's just hot water uh, in equal parts by volume to white okay. sugar. Okay. And you just mix it together. So a simple syrup? Is that what yeah, they call simple it? Simple syrup, syrup. exactly. Okay. Right. So I used about a third of an ounce there, about 10 milliliters. If you like it sweeter, you can make it sweeter. It's up to you, but that to me is a nice ratio. Is this one of your favorite drinks too? Or, uh... It's pretty much an introduction to cocktails. I think that anyone who's going to walk down that road and really enjoy the enthusiasm of cocktails and cocktail making, you're going to start with this. And it's a great way to understand whiskey because I'll always say that if you look at a raw spirit, that's a beautiful picture. You add sugar to round out those corners. You add bitters for dimension and turn that circle into a sphere 
And when you go through those levels of complexity and walk through those steps, that's the journey that the cocktail is taking on. I did not know there was so much. And, and in just the simplicity of it all, you know? <laughs> yeah, so this is really what I like to think of the old fashioned. It's like a frame for, for a picture. You're not hiding anything that the whiskey is okay. doing. You're really just providing it a little bit of context. This is where the water comes into play. I'm stirring this down. So you're, you, how, how long do you stir that? Uh, it's, you can, technically, it'll only get so cold. It can only get to about minus three degrees Celsius and it won't dilute anymore. So okay. you're essentially adding water when you do this, uh, depending on how fast you're, you're stirring, how wet your ice is. You want to kind of get it so that you're adding about 30% extra volume to the drink, in my opinion, okay. is a good ratio. Um, but again, this is one of those drinks you can play around with what's what you're using. You can use any sort of spirit. You can do it in rum old fashioned if you want. Um, oh, okay, I did, okay, good. good to know. Yeah, so basically, as long as you follow that basic premise of spirits with bitters, with sugar, you're kind of looking at what's what we would call an old fashioned. Okay. So this is a whiskey old fashioned or whiskey cocktail made, made the old fashioned way. You pour that over fresh ice in a rocks glass. And traditionally, garnish would be an orange peel or a maraschino cherry, if you've seen those. Uh, but I think an orange peel usually is just enough. Yes, and this is not the first one you've made, obviously. I'd say maybe the third today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Judging by the so position of the sun. What's going to happen here now? <laughs> so here, we're basically getting all the essential oils from the peel. I could, hopefully we can kind of see it in the light. And basically, that's just going to oh, atomize okay. on top of the drink. Right. And you can sort of thing, smell it you here. drink with yeah. your eyes first, then your nose, yeah. and then your lips. I smell the orange very, right? very strong. So it's very fragrant. Okay. You can just put that right in, and then that's inviting a little taste. So... Uh, I mean, I wouldn't want this to go to waste, so I should uh, maybe taste this and see. Uh, well, let's get an expert's opinion. About. Yeah, exactly, right? That is absolutely incredible. Um, you get a little hint of whiskey. You get uh, um, the orange and the bitters, and all of that comes together in, in such a wonderful, wonderful flavor. And you said you can do one of these with rum as well. You can do it with rum. I've done it with gin before. Uh, so gin and then replacing the sugar with honey is really quite nice. Um, and then if you have different bitters, you know, all sorts of companies making bitters nowadays, you can play around quite a bit with that template. Well, there you are. That's the classic old fashioned. Now, when we come back, we're going to fool around with some scotch and uh, we'll uh, get to that when we come back here on Backyard Bartender. I'm Brian O'Connell, this is Backyard Bartender, and uh, uh, Lexi is with me today, Mike is with me today, and we're talking whiskey, and now we're moving to scotch. Now, I have to be honest, I'm not a huge scotch fan. Well, the first thing to understand is that scotch technically is whiskey. Whiskey under is an umbrella, and under that umbrella comes all kinds of different categories. Okay. Um, scotch is just a whiskey from Scotland. Okay, so talk to me about peat and non-peat and uh, uh, single and double and... Uh, yeah, there's a yeah. lot to know there. So what we're going to be cocktailing with today is actually Highland Park. It's from the Orkney Island up on the uh, northeast coast of Scotland. Okay. And so peat is used to give some scotches that smoky essence. So if you ever have a scotch oh, and it smells okay. like a campfire, that real rustic smoky smell, that, the peat moss is where it comes from. They'll burn the peat moss and the smoke will infuse with the malt. Okay. And then they take that and distill it. And then you get this beautiful aroma. Now with Highland Park being up on the Orkney Island, it's so windy on these rugged Viking coastal land that there's no trees, there's no bark that gets into and makes this peat moss. All of it comes from heather, and heather is very light and fragrant. So the style of the peat is going to be a lot different than a lot of other peated scotches, typically around the island of Isla. Okay. Now, uh, this is called the, the penicillin? Yeah, so this, well, the cocktail where, that I'm making is the penicillin. Where did that come from? Um, it came from a bartender named Sam Ross. It was 2005, I believe. And this was first showcased at a bar called Milk and Honey. Uh -huh. And it's called the penicillin. Basically, of the medicinal ingredients, you have ginger and, and lemon and honey. And all these things typically you'd see in a hot toddy. Very similar, but um, 
when they all come together, it'll cr it, you'll understand why the smoke is there. And originally, when it was made, it was a blended scotch with a peated scotch. Okay. But because of the style of Highland Park, I skip all those steps. I'm just going to stick with the one, make this nice and simple. Okay, so how much scotch did you use? Uh, two ounces of scotch. And once again, the re these are the ingredients of the recipe. How you make it at home might be a little bit different based on your palate. But I'm going to use a full ounce of lemon juice. Fresh lemon juice always makes the world better. Not uh, bottled or uh, uh, squeezable lemon. Whatever you got is what you got. <laughs> but uh, but like, you might have to adjust if it's, yeah. if it's very sour. You yeah. might have to adjust. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a, a classic sour recipe that you can... It's basically it's the same idea as a daiquiri where you're balancing with... Everyth everything's yeah. a daiquiri. What are, these, a what are these two? So what I have here is um, just some honey syrup. You can't okay. use raw honey because it won't actually bind with all the other ingredients. This is an important step at home. You have to take your honey, add, it, add some hot water. Okay. So you're just loosening up the honey. So I have a honey syrup here, one to one, and then just some ginger juice. So if you're at home and you don't have a juice press, just take your ginger root, shave it down, Add it to your tin, take your muddler, and give that a few good stamps. And yeah, I was gonna say, how long do you muddle like that? Is that the... um, to be honest, it's kind of like how much of it do you want to okay. in there? Okay. Because if you just want a little bit of the flavor, you're not gonna break that down as much. Okay. So we're just gonna add some ice to our shaker. And at home, if you don't have a shaker, you can use a mason jar. Yeah. You can use, uh, I've seen Tupperware containers used, as long as you can get a good seal on it. And can you make this uh, like in a, in a larger batch, say, or is yeah. it better to make it one by one? Well, it's, it's, the idea is to make one by one. I mean, initially cocktails started off as punches, so they were large ones. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so this you could put in a blender. This is the part I live for. Now, are you listening for something there or just waiting for something to happen with the uh, shaker? There are so many voices in my head. <laughs> it's hard to hear <laughs> from that young. No, um, really what you're looking for is condensation on that of your glass. That's okay. when you know when your glass is chilled. Looking for the fine? The fine strainer. It's always fun bartending in backyards because you never know where anything is. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you're at work and you're just going and everything's one, two, it's so perfectly placed. <laughs> And that's why it's backyard bartending. Yes, it's exactly. Right All right. Wow! Look at that. So that that emulsion is what the shaking is all about. So there's oils in there. There's okay. a lot of components that don't combine just by stirring. So where we stirred the first one, all those ingredients can combine easily. Yeah. Where you get something that has citrus oils and ginger oil, you want that. It's almost like you're making a vinaigrette. You want to emulsify it and get it shaken down to get it all together. And then you've done the same thing with the lemon. 100%. Um, and as Alexi said earlier, when you're drinking, it's often like eating. So you want to do it with all of your sensory receptors. Yeah. And whenever we taste, we start with our eyes and we visualize it. A nice garnish will stand out and really get you interested. Then you go to the nose, then the mouth. So on the nose, you're going to get those lemons coming into it. We'll find out. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm not a scotch drinker, but that is absolutely delicious. So as I said, this is just a lightly peated style of whiskey. And now no we have, a, we have a, a little bit stronger in here, and all that you need is a little mist on that drink. And now see how much that changes. Oh, wow. wow so, so you can really alter this drink at home based on um, what you really like to drink. So what, that's the whole what, point. what was in that? Just a little bit more scotch? Or? Yeah, so that's just a heavily peated scotch. So then it gave it, yeah, it, it, it that, that yes. changed it completely again. It, it, uh, it, um. That's the beauty of a lot of his recipes from Sam Ross is that they're pretty malleable and that's kind of why he's gotten known I think across the world to to, to have his drinks on menus. Well, I, you know, I can see uh, why that is so tasty having watched you make it and all of the flavors come together and there's a, a little bit of afterbite there, but it's it's not something that you find offensive. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, it, it just it flows and it tastes well. And it's one of those drinks that you could see yourself having on a warm afternoon or or a cool afternoon, you know? Now, so this is this is again, this is the penicillin. That is the penicillin. Now that being said, if you really want to impress your bartender, 
This is a, our favorite cocktail. This is a... our one thing that me and Alexi designed on our menu is um. I'm I'm fascinated now. Is a simple yeah. beer and a shot. Yeah. A <laughs> shot and a beer. A little shot and a beer always does the trick for that's anybody. Right. So a bartender's handshake. Oh, that's what that is. An yeah. Irish whiskey. Uh and sip on whatever local beer that you're sipping on for the day. And that's a bartender's handshake? Yes, yeah, just kind of like, cheers, thanks, man. Appreciate All right, it. Well, cheers. All right, look, uh, we're going to come back because uh, we're not done yet. We're going to talk about bourbon. And uh, we have a really wonderful bourbon recipe that we're going to get to when we continue here on Backyard Bartender. Cheers. I'm Brian O'Connell, and this is Backyard Bartender, and uh, Mike Shepard is with us, Alexi Lauderud is with us, and these guys work at Tier. if you're wondering, at the Alt Hotel. You'll find them there most nights, plying their trade, and I have learned so much about whiskey and scotch, but we're not done yet. You have one more bourbon. Now, I have to be honest, I'm not a bourbon fan, but then again, I wasn't a scotch fan, and now all of a sudden... <laughs> I have an affinity for scotch. Right. But but I always thought <laughs> bourbon was uh, something from the southern U.S. that was poo-pooed by scotch drinkers, whiskey drinkers. Well, I think it's one of those things, you know, it, it, it's deep, like a lot of spirits, it's rooted in history. It's rooted in colonial history where, you know, in the States, basically, if you were a farmer, uh, you had to do something with all your grain. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the season, you know, you couldn't necessarily store all of it. So to make some money over the winter or at least keep yourself warm, you turn it into whiskey. Okay. Uh, these early whiskeys were not particularly good like we talked about earlier it was really just a, a way to kind of do something with your product um, and but it did evolve and it became regulated there are all sorts of rules for what qualifies as a Kentucky straight bourbon okay versus a general bourbon so we go back to the days of the prohibition and people making whiskey and and uh, bootleggers running whiskey and all those movies that were made about that this was probably the kind of stuff they were doing well you won't go blind from it now to yeah, say that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's the thing is, is the the it's kind of done a total shift now especially since the 80s where they've actually refined uh, okay. the, the, the process tremendously and it's probably my favorite category of spirits. So what are we making this time? So we're gonna make uh, what's called a whiskey smash. Okay. It's owed to Dale DeGroff I think in 99 he developed this at the Rainbow Room um, and this again is one of those recipes you can make it as strong as you want as weak as you want so if you want to have a few of these maybe use less than what I'm gonna put in here okay. uh, because two ounces of straight 50% alcohol by volume, you know, that's that's enough for you to not to get in the car. You know? <laughs> okay. So, um, so we're starting start with, with fresh mint? I'm starting with fresh mint. Uh, mint always goes in this drink, but uh, I'm going to keep it simple with, with just lemon. But you can put strawberries in this. It's very, very nice. Uh, I've done one of these with Hascap berries before, which we uh, managed to source for the restaurant. So a lot of little local ingredients. Yeah. So if you can keep it local, it's all the better. It's going to taste better with the weather that you have, in my opinion. Um, so you can do, like I said, different berries is nice. I'm going to keep it simple just with lemon. So I'm going to put a few pieces of lemon on top of the mint. This prevents the mint from shredding when you give it a okay. little... a little uh, Good tip to know. Yes, a little bit of a muddle. So this is your muddler. And basically you just want to gently press. You're not trying to shred everything apart. Mint, as you know, so I'll give you this. Like basically if you give it a little slap, that's going to bring out a lot of the aroma. Oh, yeah. You really okay. don't need to, to attack viciously. And, and I guess you shouldn't tear mint then, should you? No, I mean, then it's, you know, you get it in your teeth and yeah. your date might not like you as much. <laughs> <laughs> so That's I'm gonna good put advice from a bartender, I'll yeah. tell you. Uh, so two ounces <laughs> here, but again, you can make this a little weaker. And this is uh, Knob Creek? Knob Creek. It's one of the, it's the first whiskey to have what's called a small batch designation. So uh, basically they, they take very specific barrels and very specific warehouses to make this one. Um, it's called Warehouse K uh, down in Kentucky. And basically they, they only make so much of it. And it's kind of, a, it started as a pet project from the main oh, okay. master distiller down there. Uh, versus, so it's the same company that makes Jim Beam, which you're probably familiar yes, with. Yes, I've heard that. Uh, so that's kind of their bread and butter. And then they have time and the opportunities to make little, small little projects. And this was one of the first ones. And that, that's, you, that's widely available. If you were to relate it to your apple tree in the backyard, it would be the same thing as saving one branch of those ah. apples and tucking those aside, you know, right. the special ones. <laughs> So then I put in a little bit of sugar in there again, just to balance out the sourness from the 
uh, from the lemon. And so that's again, the simple syrup. The simple syrup. syrup. Okay. So I put about half an ounce in there, again, to taste. Bourbon's pretty sweet because it is mostly corn based. So mm -hmm. there is a, like already pretty nice sweetness to it. But to me, there's nothing wrong with sweet drinks. Yeah. I mean, the bartender joke is always people are saying, oh, just not too sweet. They're lying. They'd like it sweet. It's, it's not true. <laughs> I'll <laughs> it's take like, your word for it. Yeah, it's, it's so, so what's your favorite drink? Um, probably that beer in a shot, to be honest. When, you, when, yeah. You're, yeah. when you're shaking cocktails for <laughs> eight, ten hours a day, your arms are tired, your palate's all thrown off. You just want something to relax on. Yeah. Um, but a whiskey sour never goes astray. Yeah. A smash this is, is related great. to that. You know? It's more so what hour of the day is it? Yeah. <laughs> the best drink is the one that's most appropriate for the time. So then what? again, we're going to shake this. I know I have to improve my uh, my shaking. I gotta I gotta work on that. We want to hear it from across the bar. Oh, bar bartenders around the world will always joke about your shake face because if you're shaking something, you want to really put your love into it, and everyone's face is just always <laughs> a little, a little different than everyone else's. So this one you can just pour right in. You can just dump all the contents because that lime and that lemon's actually going to, or the the mint and the lemon's actually going to continue to infuse everything in the one glass. Just put it all right in. Now I have some ice that I crushed. Excuse me. <laughs> it's one of the hazards of the right. job. Yeah. Oh, that uh, and you just, just top it right up with all that crushed ice. So again, water, sugar, no bitters in this instance, but there is bitterness to the citrus so peel. So you're kind of looking at the same idea cocktail, just apply it in a different kind of plug and play kind e of way. Even in the stem of the mint, you're going to create a little bitterness as well. Yeah. So this is called a whiskey smash. Whiskey smash. And this is a nice summery one. Well, it, it, it looks it looks like a meal. <laughs> I mean, again, one of those drinks that uh, you uh, you want to serve perhaps with a spoon. I don't know. Is that... <laughs> well, that is delectable. Good lemonade, right? Oh, wow. That really... And the, the bourbon's kind of hidden in there, but you, you taste it in the after. You know, you get a little little hit of that bourbon afterwards. But sometimes with, with uh, uh, liquor, you think it's always very harsh. But all the extra, the mint, the lemon, all of that takes all that harshness away. And it's just a very wonderful backyard drink to have. And you wouldn't think it was something that's No, not, not right? with something bourbon, yeah. yeah so. so, well, this has just been a, a real eye opener. Now, you guys work at uh, Tier Restaurant downtown, and you're there through the week. So uh, if people want to know about these, uh, these drinks and they drop in, you can, uh, you can set them up. And uh, if you have uh, some information or you're looking for some information on that, you can contact me and we'll give you some contact information after. Uh, Mike and Alexi from Tier, I want to thank you so much for coming out and showing me all of this. I have a whole new appreciation for scotch, <laughs> for bourbon and for whiskey and I, I asked him what his favorite drink was yours well it's very much the same answer which is not much of an answer you know it's, it's <laughs> I, you know it's like saying what's your favorite wine it has to be appropriate for the time and sometimes it's a beer in a shot sometimes uh, it's something as complicated as you know tropical drinks or right. anything and like that if but. you're going for a nice meal you like to have a nice enjoyable cocktail before you have that nice meal and yeah, you can do you. that at home right Absolutely. And if you see yourself on the beach in 30 degree weather, you might want that <laughs> pina colada as well. So yeah. play it by ear. All right. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you both very much for uh, joining, Brian. And, Pleasure. Uh, joining Backyard Bartender. I'm Ryan O'Connell. Uh, we'll be back uh, with uh, a little bit more about our next show uh, coming up. And uh, oh, one more word. Please drink responsibly. We'll be back after this. Well, what a show, and I hope you've learned something about bourbon, uh, about whiskey, and about scotch. And as I said, uh, I was never really a scotch fan, but uh, now I've learned something that I can actually use in my backyard bar, and I hope you have too. I'm Brian O'Connell. We have more episodes of Backyard Bartender coming up, and uh, in a couple of episodes from now, we're going to talk about whiskey sours. So if you like whiskey sours, we have a gentleman who's going to make those for you and uh, do it with a twist. We also have a couple of people who are... Um, amateur bartenders or as they call themselves mixologists and unlike our professional bartenders Alexi and Mike we had here today these people are very very good but we'll see how good they really are when they make their very special rum punches that's coming up on a future episode drink responsibly everybody enjoy the cocktails that we make for you here on Backyard Bartender and we'll see you again real soon
Rogers Any Place TV. Enjoy exclusive content for free 